Hello, so I recently watched Man of Steel, and while I'm not certain that it was really trying to make this assertion or implication, I still wanted to address it, even if the movie itself is not trying to make that connection, I think that there are still far too many people who do believe that there is such a connection, and I brought my father in for his long study of totalitarian regimes and, and such, some of which have employed eugenics. Now, basically, there, in Man of Steel, there is, without giving too many plot details away, the the, the bad guys have enacted a society that thrives because of eugenics. And late in the film, one of the, one of the bad guys is talking about how they are more evolved and they, they have an evolutionary advantage. And that, that struck me as odd because a proper understanding of evolution can't actually lead to eugenics, and this video is going to be about why that is. So, basically, in, in broad strokes, the theory of evolution is that there is such immense variation in the different specimens, in, in the different in, in life forms in general, that even if the, the, the environment that these life forms thrive under, even if that nature and surroundings changes a lot, there is still a, a pretty good chance that at least some of them will survive and such. The, there is a there's a misconception that survival of the fittest means strongest. In this case, the word fit means those who who fit in this kind of environment, and that's whether the... In fact, we, we were talking about there was a... Well, yeah, just briefly, what killed the dinosaurs, if you could... Um, scientists believe that uh, sort of a meteor uh, struck uh, the Yucatan uh, Peninsula um, 50 or 60 million years ago and um, uh, basically uh, uh, all the dinosaurs were um, uh, wiped out, um, died out uh, in the course of two years because uh, following this uh, huge explosion um, compared to uh, thousands of um, nuclear bombs um, the atmosphere was filled with dust and debris so that um, the sunlight couldn't uh, hit the, the ground and uh, all um, plants uh, of course um, uh, died out uh, and the dinosaurs who were living on plants uh, died out first and uh, after them uh, those who were carnivores um, uh, couldn't um, exist um, um, longer than there were carcasses that they could eat or finally they probably ate e each other and uh, the last one just died. <clears throat> Which basically goes to show, and in that case, you, you might think that the, the, you know, the survival of the fittest, that the, the, the strongest in that case would probably have been the carnivores and they might have lived longer, but they still died out. And something important to take from that is, life didn't end on this planet, there was still life that survived. And thus, the apparently, the, the perhaps strongest life didn't survive, but the, yeah, survival of the fittest in that case meant those that could live in spite of this drastic change in in the in the circumstances, and yeah, I I think that covers evolution basically. So 
uh, if you would explain the, the idea of eugenics. Eugenics um, um, <clears throat> started as a sort of a social philosophy in 1883. Um, it was uh, in fact um, a Darwin's uh, cousin, uh, Galton, I think he was called. I think, yes. Um, who um, formulated uh, the theory that uh, evolution basically would end up uh, in uh, eugenics. Um, because um, all the minus variants of uh, evolution, they would uh, die out and in the end you would have uh, eugenics. Um, of course, um, uh, a lot of uh, people thought it was a good idea and a lot of governments tried to implement uh, the idea uh, the first decades of the 20th uh, century, especially uh, Hitler. Um, took up the idea uh, and uh, um, during the, his period from 1933 to 45, he tried to um, eliminate all the minus variants. In fact, his half-sister was um, not very bright, uh, to put it mildly, and he hated her um, for being stupid and uh, he thought that all mentally handicapped uh, and all insane people should be uh, eliminated. And um, I think uh, he managed to uh, put this um, through um, uh, during the first uh, few years of his reign uh, until uh, some uh, priests and pastors um, uh, criticized him for doing that. He had to stop uh, his uh, eugenic uh, program. But, at least uh, 90,000 um, people were killed. Uh, and in fact, that's something that if a lot of times people mention, you know, the Jews, and, and I believe it was the Jews were the largest single minority, I suppose you could mm -hmm. say, that he to try to exterminate, but yeah. he he went after, you already mentioned the mentally handicapped, yes. homosexuals. Uh, homosexuals and, and Jews uh, as well. Uh, yeah, he, it, it was the, the idea there being... He to, also to thought that the Slav, Slavonic people were inferior yeah, uh, to the Germanic people. And, and they should be also uh, eliminated or uh, at least um, um, thrown away from the area where they lived so he could take over. The, the basic uh, idea being that he thought that there were, that, that the Aryan race yes. were, was, was superior well, and that, superior race, yeah. that there was some way to eliminate the, the less desirables and, and to tie yeah. that back to, to evolution. The, so basically eugenics means trying to make these kind of value judgments about genetic material when evolution really doesn't have any kind of value judgments. There, there is no good or bad mutation. There are, there, there are mutations that can be harmful, but then there are also mutations that maybe seem like, well, they're not doing any good now, but they might further down the road prove to be beneficial the if, if if hypothetically if if before you know long long ago before we when when most of the life on earth lived in the sea if they had had the the ability to perform eugenics they might have removed mutations that were leading towards emerging from the sea and being on earth, on, on land, and we might not be on land today. You, you, can't, you can't know what will be a good variation. And basically evolution is this very, it's a system with very loose rules that ensures that some life will survive. There are, there are so many different variations that even if something, if, if there is a tremendous change in the 
environment, some life will survive. And we already mentioned the, the example of, of the death of the dinosaurs. That is in fact something that couldn't have been predicted, even if, even if it, those trying to enact eugenics would you know, use scientific methods to predict how will the climate change and mm -hmm. perform their eugenics based on that. You can't predict when, for example, meteor, a meteor might hit Earth and, and something like that. It, you can't know, <coughs> but through evolution, there, there is such immense variation that there is, that, that something will survive, whereas basically to, to tie it all together, eugenics is the idea that you should remove the variations that aren't currently doing Yes, and even, even if you try to do that, uh, you, you uh, <coughs> will always experience that bright people also may have um, um, children who are minus variants, who are not very bright. You can't uh, tell beforehand uh, what sort of offspring uh, you will have. <clears throat> but I'd like to say that if, you, if we think uh, millions of years ahead, what will evolution uh, bring to us? Uh, some years ago I read um, about a futurologist who uh, predicted that uh, we humans would be extinct in say 50 million years, but the rats they would have uh, evolved to a much uh, larger animal, uh, the size of a, a sheep. <laughs> they were, would be the strong ones, we would be the weak ones uh, who had uh, died out. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it. And remember, think, question, research. Don't take anybody else's word for it, and that includes mine.